makes Helldivers 2 so unique? I've been turning that question over and over in my mind ever since it launched back in February. For a while, it felt like every time I turned it on, I was expecting the magic to fade, for the fun to stop, for something inside me to snap as it always does when I play live service games, and for me to put the controller down and never play it again as I move on to the next big, shiny release. But here we are, three and a half months later, and Helldivers 2 is still one of the only games that I can think about. Now, this happens sometimes, right? We all get caught up on a good game for a few months from time to time, even after it seems like everyone else has already moved on. Recent examples with me were Returnal and Humanity, but what's been so wild about the response to Helldivers 2 is that I'm not alone. The game is already one of the best-selling titles ever published by Sony Interactive Entertainment thanks to its simultaneous PC release, and every day more than 100,000 players log in to help aid the spread of Super Earth's democracy. And that's kind of weird, right? The original Helldivers had its fair share of fans when it came out in 2015, but when its sequel was announced, I don't think there was much expectation for it to become one of the best and most popular games of the year. Then it launched, and now I feel like I can't escape the clutches of Helldivers 2. So we return to the question, why? What makes this game so fucking good? I've done the analysis, I've done the research, and I'm itching to share it with you. That kind of makes it sound like I've got a rash or some sort of disease. Listen, what I mean is... There are three things that make Helldivers stand out amid the ever-growing sea of live service games demanding your attention. Three things that have thrust the game into massive popularity, because honestly, no one's doing it like Helldivers is doing it. They are as follows. One, the community-driven story. Two, the excellent viral marketing that pushes the story. And three, it's just really fucking fun, you guys. Those three things come together like a tetrahedron, that's the name of a three-sided pyramid, there, now you learned something today, and point to one singular thing that drives the success of the entire game, its community. Let's start with that first point, the story. Helldivers 2 has some rich lore and a fancy opening cutscene that plays when you first start the game, but that's not really what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the way that the events of the game unfold in real time based on community action. Community-led storytelling is something that video games have kind of tried to do a few times, but it's usually not done a whole lot for me personally. Live service games like Fortnite or Apex will have community events taking place during story moments, but the things you're actually doing in-game during those events usually aren't actually impacting things narratively. Where does the Ariana Grande concert fit into Fortnite lore? And like, I'm not sure what sort of narrative thrust that Martin Luther King Jr. event had on the Fortnite multiverse. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi. Helldivers takes an approach that's actually closer to games like The Quarry or Silent Hill Ascension, if you can even call that a game. Those games employ community-led storytelling by allowing players to watch scenes play out and vote on the choices that the characters make. Helldivers 2 takes that concept but gives players much more agency to participate. Instead of voting once for how you want things to play out, the entire community is given a choice. Liberate the planet of Penta to unlock rocket launchers for everyone, or liberate Chuhei for anti-tank mines. When major orders like that come through, players are given a few days to make their choice and work toward one of the two goals. What's so cool about that, as an idea, is that if you fight hard enough for what you want, you'll get it. But you can't do it alone. So, you hit up your friends and spend a few hours working toward liberating the planet. The story incentivizes people to log in every week, to feel like they're participating in… something larger. Unlike games like Apex, the overarching narrative of Helldivers is told through the galactic campaigns that players participate in, so it's really easy to incorporate narrative elements into the game every single time a player boots it up. The game's narrative doesn't just revolve around choosing which planet to liberate, however. A few months ago, players were given the order to completely wipe out the automatons, so everyone focused their efforts on the Western Galactic Front, and after a few days, 
we were told that the bots had been completely destroyed, which was exciting for two reasons. The first is that the bots were taken out of the game completely for a few days, which made everyone feel like they had actually accomplished something since you could tangibly see the fruits of everyone's effort. The second part of what made that so exciting was that we all knew that there was no way that the automatons were just going to be gone forever. It was exciting to know that something was brewing underneath the surface. So everyone kept playing and logging in because they didn't want to miss it. I can't think of another game that handles player participation like this. Like I said, there's a narrative in Helldivers 2, yeah, but it's the story of playing the game and participating in its events that makes it so cool. Like, I can kinda tell you about how the Terminids are a manufactured threat by the Super Earth government in a play for oil, but I can really tell you about how during the campaign to push back the bots, my entire squad was wiped out and we had to fight tooth and nail to bring them back one by one, being careful not to die a single time or risk losing the mission. The thing that makes Helldiver's story so unique is that each mission you play becomes the story of the game because the overall narrative is focused on the campaigns you're participating in. I play every week and I don't want to miss anything because my participation in Helldivers 2 feels so special and unique. To me, it's a little bit like watching professional wrestling. Yeah, there are some story beats and encounters that are fabricated by the WWE or whoever, but how each night plays out in to lose control of Malevolent Creek only to gain it back again fighting tooth and nail? I have no idea, but I signed up for veteran benefits all the same because I left some blood, sweat, and fucking tears in those trenches. It was revealed a few months ago that the overall story direction of Helldivers 2 is being helmed by some guy at Arrowhead Studios named Joel, and that his role can be likened to that of a dungeon master in a game of D&D. He makes the scenarios and lets them play out based on how the players respond to them. And he's a sick, twisted fuck that won't just let the war end. Please, Joel, I see the 500 kilogram bomb when I close my eyes at night. <laughs> what makes the storytelling in Helldivers 2 so interesting is that it's happening in real time. And if you're not there for it, you're going to miss it. Now, I can understand how that might be a little frustrating and possibly overwhelming for some players. But the fact that you can miss it means that it feels special when you're catching it. Totally different game, but it's kind of like how Elden Ring handles things. That game is 100% alright if you miss an area or item or boss, because it means that the people who found it got to have that sense of discovery. For Helldivers, if you're there participating in the story, you feel a deep and profound connection to it. And that makes you want to play more, and get the battle pass, and participate in the community, and this is the entire goal of live service gaming. So the game's viral marketing goes hand in hand with the way that its story is told, since a lot of the changes to the direction of the story are communicated via social media posts. The Helldivers 2 Twitter account is one part legitimate information about the game and its happenings, and one part in-character propaganda messages from the Super Earth government. It's awesome, because it means that players are constantly checking for updates on what's going on in the story. That kind of stuff loops back to what I talked about with the way that the story is told. In my opinion, by far the most interesting thing that those accounts have done is spread misinformation about the game to the players. For example, Arrowhead added a new enemy type to the Terminid missions, a lethal flying bug named Shriekers, but it didn't tell anyone that they were doing that, and that they were being added to the game, and they kept their spawn rate really low at first. This meant that encountering Shriekers was really rare, and since most people would have no experience with them, no one knew how to handle them. So, people started asking Arrowhead devs about it on Twitter, and they just full-on lied about it, saying that anyone claiming there are flying bugs in the game is lying. That's amazing. That's what gets people excited and talking about a game, and excited to jump into missions on the chance that they might run into the flying bugs. A similar thing happened with the AT-AT walkers that got added to the bot forces. No official warning from Arrowhead, instead, a giant walking tank just started popping up for players randomly. That's incredible. No notes. Random, unannounced content drops like this are cool because it feels special when you encounter them. Then, you get to post a clip online, being like, what the fuck, and everyone else is also like, what the fuck, and then you ask Arrowhead about it, and they're like, you made that up. Stuff like this really bands a community together, and gets them excited to log into the game. This sort of experience is 
so unique when it comes to live service games because most games in the genre want to make sure that no one has a more special experience than anyone else out of fear that people might feel a little bit left out. But Helldivers navigates that really well by making everyone feel like a part of the mystery. If you weren't the one seeing the mystery bugs, you might be the one tweeting at Arrowhead Studios or examining the footage and coming up with possible stratagems to use against them. It's not that people feel like they're having experiences with different values when playing the game. Instead, it's that everyone gets to have different roles in the community, which I think is equally interesting. Other live service games keep things different for each player by giving random loot drops or things like that. But, and this is just my opinion, that sort of thing just doesn't do much to actually push players to engage with the community. Plus, I bet it's super easy to implement on the dev side of things since you just put the new enemies in the game and then that's it. You don't need to write any press releases or do fun social videos. You just deny the new content's existence for a while. It's great. So the last element, and arguably the most important to what's helped define Helldiver's success is, it's just fucking fun, okay? You've played it, you don't need me to tell you why it's amazing. I mean, I will, but I don't have to. Helldivers 2 is one part tactical PvE extraction shooter and one part jackass the game. The shooting is tight, all the weapons feel adequately punchy while all having their own specific drawbacks, which makes you rely on your teammates to deal with the varied encounter types in the game. It's the type of game where you most likely won't be able to play on the harder difficulties alone since it's very hard to be equipped to handle everything that the game will throw at you with a single loadout. That is one of the strongest elements of the game's success, since it means that players are much more likely to play with friends or get active in the community, and both of those things make you want to play more. Each mission in Helldivers makes you feel like you got by by the skin of your teeth. Your heart is racing while you try to extract as enemy forces ramp up and you start to realize that if you make enough little mistakes, there is a very real chance that you'll fail and all your efforts will be for nothing. Totally different game, but I get the same feeling from games like Resident Evil 4 or The Last of Us, where I know I have to get through a horde of incoming enemies, but I don't exactly have enough ammo to actually make that happen, so you have to get crafty. You're constantly rerouting your path to success as things go right and wrong, and it's just fucking fun. The actual mechanics were great, and if the shooting was all there was to the game, it would still be really fun. However, like I said before, Helldivers is one part solid shooter and one part jackass the video game. Jackass the game. Friendly fire damage is really high, meaning that it's super easy to maim or kill one of your teammates at pretty much any point. The stratagem explosions are what I would consider to be about 10% too big and last for a few seconds too long, meaning that Helldivers 2 has purposefully created situations where you're likely to get yourself and your friends hurt. It's hilarious, but because you're always on the verge of being overrun by enemies, you start to play sloppier. <laughs> Helldivers 2 has this excellent domino effect of trying to take care of one problem, but the solution creates more intricate problems. For example, you might be running away from a horde of enemies. So you drop a bunch of landmines on the ground, but that's where your teammate was trying to reload their anti-tank weapon or whatever. So now they have to very carefully weave in and out of the mines while also being chased by the giant bugs. And then a huge bomb falls from the sky right next to you, which was accidentally knocked out of your other teammate's hand when they were hit by a giant charging bug. It's chaos, and it's hilarious, and it feels incredible to pull off when there are so many things standing in between you and victory. And it just never gets old. How could it? There are so many different options. While, yes, you'll likely play through similar mission types if you spend a lot of time in the game, the domino effect I just mentioned means that Every match has its own unique set of problems that you'll need to overcome, and since the solutions to those problems often entail creating more problems, you'll need to overcome them too. It's a mad dash to the end that feels great every single time. So you have this excellent gameplay loop that encourages players to hop online with their friends and engage with a community that works together to fight for a common goal, and a story that makes players feel like they're active participants as opposed to casual observers, and an experience that extends beyond the confines of a PS5 or your Steam account and reaches into social media ARG, and 
that's Helldivers 2. So when I'm thinking about what makes the game so good, it's not just about how the breaker shotgun turns bots into bits in a single shot, although that's certainly a part of it. It's about the entire experience of playing the game. I wouldn't exactly say that I'm an active participant in the online Helldivers community, but I certainly follow it to keep up with what's happening each time I log on. I've followed plenty of big live service games, but I haven't really seen this type of energy surrounding them. This sort of constantly growing excitement that's been baked into a player base starving for more. The other live service game that I've put the most amount of time into was Apex, but in my opinion, the community just felt different. There are a handful of factors to that, but I think that Helldivers has just figured out a way to make all of its elements point directly to community growth and strength. This video is called Helldivers 2 Saved Live Service Games, and while I think that's kind of dramatic, sorry, that's just how you have to get people's attention on YouTube. Like and subscribe. I do think that studios will look to Helldivers when trying to cook up new games in the genre. Now, I could be wrong here, so feel free to let me know in the comments, but I feel like it's been so long since there's been a successful live service game launch. Everything I've been seeing as of late has been Suicide Squad and Foam Stars, which were kind of dead on arrival with how tired people are of this sort of experience. Helldivers completely subverted any sort of eye rolling that comes hand in hand with new live service releases though, and I think that's largely for the ways that it doesn't feel like those sorts of games. And it's funny, Sony says that it has like 12 live service games in development right now, but it published Helldivers 2 and I'm not sure if it's going to learn the right lessons from it when it comes to publishing more. I mean, just last week, there was the announcement that PC players were going to be required to sign into PlayStation Network accounts in order to access the game. This decision um, did not go over very well among fans and was walked back by Sony, but to me, it's a little indicative that the company might not understand what exactly it has on its hands. And if it's going to misunderstand a clear knockout hit that's in the prime of its life, then I'm not so sure it's going to know what to do about whatever else it has cooking. Horizon Online, or Sackboy Battle Royale, or whatever. I feel like the general attitude toward live service game announcements lately has been profoundly negative. Most people already have their game or games that they play consistently, and there's just no need for adding more to that. Helldivers 2 has turned that attitude on its head just a little bit. Now, if a live service game says it's trying to do what Helldivers is doing, I might be a little bit more interested than whatever Battle Royale game Ubisoft probably has cooking up. Now that the game has this momentum, all eyes are on Arrowhead to keep Helldivers 2 an excellent experience. Luckily, it seems like everyone is on the same page there. Arrowhead CEO Johan Pilstead told players on Reddit, we have a sole purpose, to make this the best live service game you've ever played. And you know what? He might just be right. Like and subscribe, class dismissed. <laughs>